we talked about angles, uh, where they came from, how come there are 360 of them inside of a circle. Uh, and basically we got used to drawing circles, uh, sorry, drawing angles inside of a circle in their standard position. We know about coterminal angles and stuff like that. So the unit circle, when students hear this, when high school students hear the unit circle, there's like a lore behind this unit circle thing. It's this dreaded concept. It's this whole subject that people just dislike. And I think it's super unfair to the unit circle. Let me explain to you what the unit circle is. Okay. Very simply, the unit circle is just a normal circle on a coordinate plane centered at the origin that has a radius of zero. So literally, like this point here, this is the origin, it's zero, zero. Okay, this point here is one over on the x-axis is one comma zero. This point here is one up on the y-axis, so it's zero comma one. This point here is one left on the x-axis, so it's uh, negative one comma zero. And then similarly down here, this is one down on the y-axis, so zero comma negative one. That's it. That's what the unit circle is. Now, there's obviously there's more to it, but all it is really is like, okay, here's a point on the unit circle, and its coordinate is x comma y. And I can, if I wanted to, I could draw a triangle. I could, I could say, all right, here's this, like, so remember, okay, we said if we draw an angle in a standard position, what it means is, like, that blue line here, that's the, ter that's the starting side, the starting, uh, the starting side. And then over here, this is the terminal side, so the initial side and the terminal side. And this is the angle theta, okay? That's it. This is what the unit circle is. We can draw angles within the unit circle, okay? There's a little bit more to it. Let me talk a little bit about that and then talk about where we're going with this. So, like I said, we have a we have a spot on this on this unit circle and it's x comma y. Okay. Now, if we were to if we were to to drop a an altitude, basically we say okay, we've got a line that connects from the center of the circle to that point on the to that point on the circle, then okay. We have that, and we can drop this altitude right here. And what we have is a, a right triangle that's created. And the angle between the between the uh, initial side and that terminal side right there, that's just theta. And we know, because this is a unit circle, we also know something important. And that's that this length, the hypotenuse of any triangle that we can draw within the unit circle is always just going to be 1. The hypotenuse of any right triangle we can draw because the radius is 1. The distance from the center to any point on the circle is just 1. Okay, So that's kind of neat because there, we have the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that if this is x, then, that, then, then this is x. And if this is y, then this is y. And we know that the relationship between the, the side lengths of this triangle, the Pythagorean theorem, is x squared plus y squared uh, equals, and would be, well, sorry, let's start that over, right? Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But this particular triangle, though, we could say that that's x squared plus y squared equals 1, because 1 squared is just 1. And this idea here is so important. It's so fundamental to trigonometry. And, and it, it's, it's very important because we can describe x in terms of theta, and we can describe y in terms of theta. And that's the part that I think students kind of tend to struggle with. Maybe not so much conceptually how to describe x in terms of theta and y in terms of theta, but that there are specific common points. Uh, there are specific angles. There are certain angles that are, are very common. Uh, and those angles have some coordinate points. Coordinate points, like uh, with the, the point that corresponds to that angle on the inner circle. They are, they are known values. And we can use those common angles to, to like s start to build out our knowledge of trigonometry. Uh, and and, and it, there's a lot of memorization. Students want to always memorize all of these things. So you see some, a very common like uh, mental image of the unit circle might be just this blank circle with all these little spaces on it that you have to fill out from memory. And I, I kind of dis fundamentally disagree with that sort of thinking. I don't think we have to, I don't think we have to just memorize all these things. If we can just in our heads, kind of have a mental image of a unit circle and physically like 
okay, here's a point here. If we if we think about this, this this x distance is greater than this y distance because the only reason that is is because we're we're above 45 degrees right here, right? At 45 degrees, that x distance and that y distance would be the same z's. Okay. Also, we know that the maximum possible y value is one. The minimum possible y value is negative one. The maximum possible x value is positive one. The minimum positive possible x value is negative one. And, and if we can just, in our heads, kind of picture this unit circle and the location, the standard, like a standard position of an angle. So if we had 135 degrees, for example, right, that's over here. Okay. Oop, I wanted to make that a different color. What heck? Make a different color, different color. Uh, then, well, now we're talking about this angle over here, okay? We're talking about that angle. And so if we can just imagine where that is and we can then figure out what that length is and what that length is, there's so much we can learn about this. And it doesn't require a ton of memorization. So that's what I want you to think of going into our further discussion about the unit circle. Is all it is, is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. And we're going to examine uh, the coordinates, the coordinates that correspond to certain angles within that circle. That's it.